Good morning. Good morning. This meeting is called to order October 17, 2024, South Carolina Disabilities and Special Needs. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning, staff and executive staff. Good morning, employees of South Carolina Department of Disabilities and Special Needs. <laughs> Okay, first thing we want to do is uh, notice a meeting statement and Commissioner Coher. A meeting notice announcing the date, time, and place of October 17, 2024. Commission meeting was distributed on October 15, 2024 to the appropriate media. Other groups or individuals have requested notification. The announcement and agenda was post were posted at the Department of Disabilities, Special Needs, Central Administrative Office, and on the website. The public has been notified that accommodations such as interpreters, mobility assistance, and other assistance will be provided to individuals with disabilities and special needs if requested in advance. Thank you. I've already done the welcome. It's the adoption of the agenda. What's your pleasure? Um, I would like to make a motion that we remove um, item the first item on under 12, under new business, from the agenda for this particular meeting. Is that conveyance of properties? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, conveyance of properties, yes. I'll second it. Properly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Commissioner Woodhead? Is she there? Yes. Oh, yep, sorry, I'm muted. Aye. Properly moved and second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. So ordered. Invocation, Commissioner Woodhead. Dear Heavenly Father, we bring you here today to give us the strength and wisdom to make the best decisions for those people that we serve. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very, very much. Have two item six, approval of September 16th, 2024, commission meeting minutes. Your pleasure. So moved. Second, that we've approved the minutes for the meeting. So moved, all in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. So ordered. Commissioners update. Commissioner Woodhead, do you have any updates? I, um, yep. So um, just this past month, um, traveled down to uh, Georgia um, to participate and be a fan of Clemson's adaptive tennis team as we participated in our first uh, tournament, um, and there was four colleges represented, and uh, Clemson had a great showing, um, and it's excited to get the, the season underway. That was it. Thank you very, very much. We appreciate that. Commissioner Thomas. Uh, the, uh, one of the concerns I had, oh, beginning a number of years ago and and then brought back up again when uh, we were we were looking at one of the items in the budget concerning Grumble genetics they wanted to advance some of the programmatic things they have mr. chairman uh, to adults and I talked to Constance about you know getting getting some some idea is there everybody knows uh, it's a pass-through that, that they receive through us and the state um, it, 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 it's a little, it's a little complicated and somewhat, uh, uh, com and somewhat convoluted and, and, and Constance, uh, I think had recruited uh, one of our budget folks and Rob to go out and, and talk to him. I've been out there before, but it's been five years, I guess, four years since I went out and visited. Uh, so they, they sort of, uh, got a, a lay of the land for what, what's going on with Greenwood genetics. I had asked questions about patents uh, being um, the lack of patents in you know they, they don't do patents but uh, I had had some experience on intellectual property when when uh, the legislature had taken up something rel relative to Clemson uh, guaranteeing basically that they got all the funds from intellectual property that um, uh, that, that they came up with relative to some of the ICAR things that were going on. Anyway, uh, Constance was nice enough to, to get those folks sent out. They were going to report back to me, but but I, it is my fault. I have had a little trouble every time Rock would try to fill me in. Uh, I, I would be right in the middle of something. So uh, hopefully I'll be back with, um, uh, or, or Rob, 
to, to fill the, the group in. We're actually told at some point that we have a responsibility to check this out. This isn't just fiddling around and stuff that's none of our business, even though most of the money is passed through money. But I, I hope to see this laid out in, in, in written form and not just not just verbal. We may be quizzed about this at some point down through the, the governor's budget or or one of the entities, finance committee or house ways and means committee. So there, there you go, just an update on what we did relative to the past. Or thank you. Director Holloway, you have any Thing you want to add to what the man, the, of the, the man of the hour just walked in the, <laughs> the man of the hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, him and Bruce Busby and a member. And our, and our, uh, our budget contact, uh, our, our staffer in the budget office, uh, Brad Bunter. We uh, we visited Greenwood Genetics. <laughs> Commissioner of mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of privilege here and say that anybody that knows uh, Chairman Miller will find out very quickly that he's from Maysville. <laughs> and if you have another five minutes to spend with him, you will hear the name Mary McLeod Bethune. Uh -huh. Well, my wife reads a book a week, so I'm always looking for books to present to her to read. And I found a book because of his mentioning the name Mary uh, McLeod Bethune, there is a autobiography about her that I read, and I wanted him to have a copy of it. Uh, I knew nothing about the lady, but she's a, a tremendous lady. She actually died in 1955, which is, I was only three years old then, so you know how old I am. But uh, she is the only black that has a uh, statue in the Statuary Hall in Washington, D.C., which is a real shock to me, but that's quite an honor. And she also established uh, Bethune-Cookman University. And there's a whole lot more about her. And I will tell you this book is used because I read it. <laughs> but that is your gift. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'll, I'll pass this on to my wife. She's the grand niece of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. I couldn't quite figure that out, yes. And uh, I think the statue came about during COVID. And Speaker Nancy Pelosi at the time could only invite 75 actual persons to witness the unveiling. And she and I were two of the 75. Yeah, so yeah. thank you very much. You know what, yeah. yeah, absolutely. He's probably already had that book. Yes. Think, yeah, we'll just pass it on. No. <laughs> 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 you know, we're going to get him the autograph. I'll give you Commissioner you. Mount. Yes, um, I only have one quick update today, and that is that um, I met with a wonderful man that is um, in charge of donations for the Shriners Hospital for Purple Children, or, and I'm about to meet with him again in a couple of weeks about some things about them, and I just wanted to, to mention them and say that um, they do a lot of work for people with disabilities, mostly neurological disabilities and cerebral palsy and other things. And um, and spinal cord injuries and spinal cord problems and things of that nature. But they are a very wonderful organization. They're the ones that I was involved with from the time I was about eight until the time I was 18. And so, and they did a lot of wonderful work for me. And so it's something for anybody across our state to look into if they need um, medical care for somebody that's under the age of 18. Obviously, you graduate out of there whenever you're 18. So um, that's probably something I should have mentioned a long time ago, but... Um, for some reason, I just thought about it whenever I met with him that I had never mentioned that before, but I wanted to mention mention them. And if you have any questions about them, you can obviously email me through the website. Thanks. Thank you. Today is a special day. The 2023, what is it, Golden Palmetto Award. Am I correct, yeah. Director Hunter? You're correct. And the winner for this year is, what, Berkeley County? Good. Okay. Yes. So, Barry and I will be going uh, with the Navy driving the ship <laughs> mm -hmm. over to do the presentation, mm -hmm. and Barry will do the talking, and I'll just <laughs> hold the award. <laughs> <laughs> so so he, he has a three-minute window. So if he takes more, I can't debate that. <laughs> I won't so, take more than that. No, no you're, good. you're good. You're yeah. good. I will not take yeah. that. But 
I just wanted to thank uh, those that helped to make this happen. And I always want to thank uh, the director and the executive staff and all of the employees because things just don't happen in thin air. So every moment and every opportunity that I would get, I always wanted to thank you guys for helping to ease the burden on those that have disabilities and special needs throughout the state of South Carolina. So my hat's off to you. Thank you very, very much. Y'all gonna give me an applause. Appreciate it. And all you were doing was hopeless. That's, that's you gotta give me applause for just hopeless. That's right. <laughs> that's it. Okay, one other thing I would like for Director Holloway, we have some new attorneys. Oh, yes. <laughs> we don't want to forget the I'm attorneys. I'm a uh, brain freeze, so I'll let Erin introduce them. Ms. Erin. Hello, yes, we have two new attorneys joining our staff. I have Joe Shakabonasa. How are you doing? <laughs> and Hello. Jessica. Then, then. Since we weren't going to have another commission meeting till January, I thought it was important for them to come see y'all in action. So thank you for allowing us to be here and uh, observe the commission meeting today. Thank you. Commissioners? <laughs> thank you. Did they tell you how much your workload? <laughs> no, not, yet. not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you all will be smiling the next time. <laughs> Chairman is... Um, is, yeah. Con is Constance going to give an explanation as to why my application to be an attorney <laughs> turned down? What, what, that? that would be Carolyn, who's at a, a procurement <laughs> training, because I had no part in this round. Of, Maybe you can hire me as a janitor. Here. I will find out for Carolyn. <laughs> All right, we have the public input. There's a term called life changes. And... God have a way of getting our attention when we don't even realize it ourselves. And so, Commissioner Thomas, yes, sir. tell us who we have today. We have a very good friend of mine that I have developed a, just a, a really nice relationship with. He's quite a remarkable person. He's kind of halfway into an autobiography, Bruce Hudson, right over here. And, and the, the, the red hat indicates no political significance. <laughs> no writing is on the red hat, so I just want to make sure that. And, and I don't know if the cameras can get to him and, and, and all that, but you see him in a wheelchair. Um, the, um, the condition was due to a gunshot wound uh, that, that paralyzed him. And I'll let him tell the rest, but when, when I found out that he was receiving just this just, just past week, receiving services from the department, which I did not know. I said, well, why don't you just come tell your uh, uh, story? So it just has three minutes and all that. But um, he, he got here by, uh, by bus from his apartment here in the city. And this is where he lives. And he was so excited about speaking, he told me that he got up at 4 o'clock this morning and took the early bus. So he's been waiting for two hours to, to speak to the commission. So... Uh, I, I throw him over to you. We call that determination. That's and, determination. And prayerfully, those that are listening will be able to kind of understand from where he's going to come from. He and I had a conversation. So hopefully his life-changing experience can help someone else from crossing over that threshold and going to straighten now. Mr. Austin, Mr. Hudson. Yes, sir. Sincerely, Grace us if you please. I sincerely thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak here. Me and my Christian brother and mentor and father figure, Dave Thomas, were shocked when we both found out we were both a part of this beautiful organization called DDSN. He asked me to come here and tell you all how it's been. My name is Bruce Hudson. In 2017, I was gunned down violently in a home invasion slash robbery where I was the victim and ended up paralyzed, bedridden, and consequently sent to prison for drug dealing. I lost everything due to the incident, my child, my baby mother, my money, my home, my freedom, my health. And being that I was raised by the government as an orphan, 
by DSS with no family, by the time I was released from prison, I had absolutely nothing and no one to turn to. Sadly, I ended up homeless and paralyzed. Ashley Williams is my DDS and case manager. If not for her and Dave Thomas and a few others, I would have killed myself years ago. So DDSN in many ways have saved my life. Ashley searched and found me the apartment I live in today. I've been a part of many government programs throughout my life, DSS, SEDC, MTS, and more. I can truly say that DDSN is the best organization I've ever seen. Here's a list of things they have helped me with. Them in my case manager. Nursing time, CNA time, sitter time, this wheelchair that I'm sitting in, medical supplies, medical equipment. Right now, a lift has been applied for that will help me to get out of bed independently in a $9,000 wheelchair ramp when I had mom, another place to have staying in. I personally would like to thank all of you for the services and aid I've received through the Haskey program under DDSN. Not only did it help me rebuild my life by helping me become independent as possible, but it also saved my life in many ways. There's a list of suggestions and add-on thoughts I have so if anyone has questions on how we can do more, I'm willing to give my opinion by coming back. But for now, I know I'm on a timer. So at this point, I close. I thank you all and have a blessed day. Man, if I'd have known that, I'd have given you an hour. <laughs> give this man an hour. I thank Commissioner Thomas, Ashley Williams, the entire staff for because that's he's an example that's what that's what we are about and life changes and experiences we wouldn't wish that upon you we buried a young man yesterday that was uh killed in uh, lee central from maysville south carolina so what you've shared with us hopefully some young man some young lady will recognize and then readdress the road that they are traveling. Again, on behalf of this commission, commissioners, you have, you, anybody want to make any comments, feel free to do so. I just wanted to ask, do you have, is there any, is there any one moment you'd like to share with us where, where you decided to go from complete despair to trying to be a, another wonderful member of our society again? Was there one, was there one person or one moment that, that was shared with you that made you make a decision to change? I gave my life to Christ. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. Thank you very much. That's it. That is how we can tell that God can change lives. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you again, Commissioner Thomas. We've just talked a lot. This is the tip of the iceberg, what he said today. Okay. Every aspect of his life is just fascinating. And, and sad, and sad, but victorious is sort of two sides to this phenomenon that's sitting over there. I would just like to thank you very much for coming and for the effort that it took, as we heard earlier, to be here. It is not easy for anybody with disabilities to do things, and, and, we, and most people don't think about how much effort it takes to do any little thing as it does me and any other people, but I have no, I, I take no effort to do anything compared to your effort. And I would like to commend you for the efforts it took to be here and to do this today. Thank you. Don't leave. We want to take a picture. So make sure the yeah. photographer comes up when, whenever. Uh, Director Holloway, you have anything you want to add? Commissioner Wood, I do. Go ahead. I do. I do. I wish I was there. I would give you a huge hug. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, you know, also, you know, having someone paralyzed in my life is, is just, you know, having you here today is is very 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 heartfelt and and i i do appreciate it and um if you ever want to do anything into depth of sports you know kind of just look us up um but yeah i appreciate you very very much and thank you for sharing um your story 
Chairman, uh, it's a it, it's an interesting thing. If I could just uh, add up one little comment uh, that that uh, that I know Bruce uh, had had uh, I just found out what his budget was. Uh, but after the special tubing, excuse me for getting kind of graphic, but uh, he's got to be hooked up to a number of things and typically visits the hospital a couple of times a month. Um, he gets compensation for that, but once you go through the list of expenditures and, and, and all that, he has a total of about $9 a day for food. It's tough. It's tough. So that's why you handed that sandwich earlier? I got a sandwich here that I had to hold back because he tried to grab it from me. So he, he thought I didn't. He thought I didn't know that. Where's that sandwich? You have it, right? Where you like? <laughs> okay. Anything, Doc, uh, Director? Um, no, I'll just add. This is. I mean, Mr. Hudson is a prime example of why we do what we do. Um, these are the days that we look forward to. We often focus on the negative. Um, and his stories make all our sleepless nights worth it. So thank you, Mr. Hudson, for sharing your story. And before you leave, would you get the photographer? Because I want to make sure we get this this good shot, especially with the staff here as well. Okay, he so may, someone. He may be already at the recruitment event. Oh, okay. we'll, we'll anybody got a camera? We need to make sure we get a shot of this. Rob's got it. <laughs> if you don't mind, let's take to get the shot now. With uh, we'll swing him over there, and the commissioner, let's go on the back right here, and let's take a picture of this. This is for history, and for those young people that are looking for direction. You want us to Bring him, him, slide him in into, into. Yeah, come on, slide him in, slide him in. Here. Well, good thing I'm the chairman. <laughs> Oh man, he, he's driving it in. It does. Back in, you back in, you do it. Back in. Whoever got the best phone. That would be correct. Whoever has the best one. Put uh, Woodhead up on the screen. I want her to I want him to turn around this way. Do me a favor. I'm impressed. Turn around this way. Hello. Well, I'm not an expert with the chair. Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's gone down. He can't get it back. No problem. No problem. I appreciate it when you do, though. Yeah. I definitely get this to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're still right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll take November just to make sure we get them to you. So, maybe before Thanksgiving. Yes. Just take the All right. Turn around. Yeah. Turn around. Yeah. Turn around. Yeah. Turn around. Yeah. Turn around. 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 Turn I really do appreciate it. Yeah, oh, I understand it. I'm, and, and, and it's not an emergency fund anyway. It's not, okay. It's not, nothing's yeah. going to change next week. And then we'll get you on a routine basis. Let's get a real deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Y'all come on. Yeah, come on, everybody. I want everybody in this picture. Come on. Come on. Get a job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, short person to take a picture now. Come on up in uh, Barry. Come on up in. I'm not sure why the costume won't come up, man. Sorry to hear that. Constance, you come up here and I'll call with you. Everybody, I want you in the, in the come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, hurry up, let's move. They're so shy. Come on. They're so shy. This could be your greatest award. <laughs> I want to make sure everybody's in the, by the door, come on in. I'll make sure your faces are shown. All right. We've got plenty of room down here. Slide on these. All right. Chair, but that's what he wants. Oh, okay. Yeah. Come on, Doctor. Bring up your necktie. Great. We don't.
get a moment like this always. But we take advantage. I'm sorry, Michelle, you're not in the picture. <laughs> all right. That is quite all right. I'm enjoying, you know, yeah, watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so the battery's good. Will it move? It won't move. It went down and just straight down. You want to reboot it? Turn it. You want to maybe turn it off? Turn it back over to you? Yeah, that's what I did. Do we have a way to charge it? It won't even allow me to. <laughs> you can't move it. It's like locked. Do you have any way to turn? I have the doors. There's a short in it somewhere. I don't know what's going on. It's just suicide. Do we have anyone that can uh, call somebody? I'm just asking. Do we have a motion? All right. Why don't we just make a motion to have a 10 minute recess until we can get. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. This kind of All in favor? Second. All right, have it. Probably get Okay. Thank you very, very much for that stress test. <laughs> okay. We had commission committee business. That's 10 A policy. We had nine. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Programs and services. National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Awareness Month. Mrs. Miller. Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Miller, Mr. Miller, good morning to you. I mean, and good morning, commissioners. Thank you so much for making time for National Disability Employment Awareness Month today. Um, October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month, also known as NDEAM. And NDEAM provides an opportunity to celebrate the value and talent workers with disabilities add to South Carolina's workplaces and economy. This year's theme for NDEAM is access to good jobs for all. DDSN providers assist 1,034 individuals in supported employment and a further 798 individuals in group employment. And the median hourly wage for the people that we support has crossed $9 an hour. It's very good. Governor McMaster marked this year's NDEAM with a proclamation that reads, in part, National Disability Employment Awareness Month recognizes that individuals with disabilities are capable, contributing members of society, worthy of full access and inclusion in South Carolina's workforce. All month long, we have been featuring stories of people with disabilities that we support. Last month, Central Office staff had the pleasure of traveling to Chiraw, South Carolina, uh, where we attended a Rotary luncheon celebrating one of our participants 30 years of service at Walmart in Chiraw. Supported by the skilled staff of Chesco Services, we're going to meet Sammy. We have a short video for you to, to, to view this morning. Sammy is responsible for cleaning, stocking, and safety sweeps, among other duties, at his local Walmart. He is very well known by the community and store leadership commended his dependability as an employee. So again, we have to pause for a few minutes to bring the video up so that everyone can see it. Um, but today's been a great good news day after Bruce's story and always celebrating Employment Month is, is a highlight for, for our staff. So I think we can, we're just gonna pause for a moment, right? And bring the video up. Mm -hmm. DDSN works with providers across South Carolina to ensure that individuals with disabilities are able to find work. We spoke with Sammy McAlilly, a Walmart employee of 30 years who has an intellectual disability. We also spoke with Sammy's co-workers at Walmart and employees at Chesco Services who all helped support Sammy with his job. Back in 1994, I first started. I was 19 years old at the time. 
my job coach, Johnny Ray Davis, he helped me to get this job out here. And they say they needed me to start from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. when I first started. Then after a while, after I've been here so long, then they had me to come in like 8 to 4, 8 to 5, and then I think it was like one time 8 to 6. I said, I'll be glad to do 8 to 5, 8 to 6. It don't matter to me. I just take them all. <laughs> My job is maintenance. I do like bathrooms, trash, take the trash out the hangers. I do trash at the service desk. Then I do a safety suite throughout produce and the whole entire store. Once I get that done, I do another round from pets, garden center, and, and then infants. Then after that, I do the bathrooms again. Then I do trash at the front. And then before I go home, I do another safety suite. And then it be clean then. <laughs> yes, sir, it be clean. I've been here 30 years come the 29th of this month. Sammy shared his favorite part of the job. Oh man, my favorite part is greeting, speaking to everybody and greeting everybody. That's my favorite. And my other favorite part is bathrooms and safety sweep. <laughs> That's my other important lot I like to do. Cause safety sweep, when you go around, you can go pretty fast. <laughs> He also expressed his feelings about having an intellectual disability. It kind of, I kind of don't let it affect me, you know. I just be happy and just enjoy every bit of it. <laughs> I just enjoy every moment of it. <laughs> Sammy's co-workers at Walmart talked about his personality. Sammy has a very outgoing personality and he is very infectious to everybody he comes in contact with um, on a daily basis, no matter what you, he's always in a good mood. Um, everybody he deals with, he's he's speaking or greeting them and he's thanking his heavenly father for everything that's, that's happening to him. So, um, but as far as, as, he's a very good asset to our company, as far as uh, representation of customer service and how we all should be. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Um, if I had more Sammys, the store would be a better place. Um, and I think that the whole country would be a better place, honestly. Um, when I tell people that I work at the Shaw Walmart, that's the first person they ask me if I know. I mean, he is a pure staple in this in, in this town. Um, there's, you associate Sammy with Walmart, Walmart with Sammy, and he's, he's just amazing. You come in in a bad mood, he'll put you in a great mood. He adds to the whole Walmart experience. Um, it is definitely an experience when he is here. You can hear him. If he's at the front door, you can hear him back here. Uh, you know where he's going by the sound of his voice, and he's he's going to speak. <laughs> oh, man, the people I work with, they like my family, like my second family. They are very nice, very nice to me, and I just enjoy working with them. Employees at Chesco Services describe their experiences working with Sammy. I've been, been working with Sammy um, over 30 some years, and I have individuals that works with Walmart. I have some working at different jobs. Sammy has been the one that uh, inspired me because when I'm down, that's what lifts me up, Sammy does. I've been working with Chesco Services for over 22 years now. Uh, I've known Sammy for uh, approximately 30 years that he's been at Walmart. I met him when I was 16 years old in high school, and uh, I was amazed then at his personality and uh, his uh, all the good things he was doing at Walmart caught me as a surprise to begin with. Um, then over time you realize that he is really that happy and that outgoing all the time. And he has really made our job so much easier at Chesco as far as getting jobs for other people, whether it be at Walmart or other programs, uh, just because everyone knows Sammy. Uh, just the fact that he's been um, the uh, citizen of the year here in Toronto. He's also been the grand marshal of the Christmas parade. Uh, so everyone in Toronto knows him. So. Uh, anytime we're looking for a place to place another individual uh, in, you know, in individual employment, they, they always want another Sammy. So, um, and we've been fortunate. We have a lot of other great guys and gals who are uh, employed at other locations, but uh, Sammy is definitely one that's probably the most well-known. Christina spoke about what it's like working with employees who have disabilities and special needs. 
um, is definitely an experience. Um, they are very, very just full of life. And it, it makes everything so much better. You, you get so caught up in the day-to-day, -day, everyday business and you forget how to live. And my guys know how to live. And they truly come in here and remind us what it's supposed to be like. Christina also talked about the collaboration between Walmart and Chesco Services and in placing individuals with disabilities in jobs. Johnny and I have a very good relationship. Um, Johnny will call me and he'll say, you know, I've got such and such that needs a position. What what can you do for him? And then they'll come in and we'll typically we'll do like a group interview. Um, and if I have issues, cares, comments, concerns, all I have to do is text Johnny and he's he's here. He's helping doing on the job coaching, things like that. They'll come spend the day with them if they need to just to kind of get them back on that right direction. Johnny explained how he addresses challenges that employees may face and what qualities employers should have when hiring someone with special needs. I enjoy dealing with people at Walmart because they, if I have a problem with salmon, they're going to call me. And I, that's a big thing with my program is that, you know, we all believe in giving people a second chance. And with Sammy, uh, he have problems at times and they'll call me. I said, now he would tell you I can out and talk with him there and put him back on track. And, you know, you, this job, you have to have patience. If you have no patience, I can promise you it won't work. Christina and Trish offered advice for employers considering hiring individuals with disabilities basically have to see what that person basically can do and how that's really going to benefit your company um, as them being an asset. Um, there's always something they can do, whether it's just, you know, pushing a broom, you know, anybody can do that part. So it's, you just have to figure out what it is that your company needs and that person can attribute to that part. And I'm 100% a believer if they come to work, there's something for them to do. Mm -hmm. um, what we hire you for might not be what you need to be doing. We can have, it's our job to figure out where you fit in and what you need to be doing. So there's absolutely, there's always something for somebody. Sammy expressed how his job fosters his independence. I got my own place. I stay in Chiral, Mar it's called not Marfield, but town and country apartments. And they are real nice apartments. I cook, I clean, I wash. I, I do my own laundry. I, dry, I got my own dryer. I take my own bath, I eat, cook, and then I vacuum clean, put the carpet fresh down, and then I vacuum clean, and my house be smelling like a rose. <laughs> Gabe spoke about how he has seen Sammy grow over the years. You know, when I first met him, he was 19 years old working here. So uh, now he's approaching his 50th birthday. So um, not only has he grown as far as the job and knowing the task and everything and even changing jobs over time, um, but also his growth uh, within the community. He is very involved with, um, he's on our human rights committee. He is involved with his church, uh, Special Olympics. Um, he's just involved in everything and anything he can be involved in. Lastly, Sammy conveyed how his family feels about his job and independence. Oh man, they are very proud of me. They say just keep up the good work. And I tell them I will always do that. <laughs> I just want to work. <laughs> I don't think about nothing else but work. That is it. Yes, sir. given the time today. Um, this, this video will go live on our socials sometime today, and every week we've been posting a video. So I hope you follow our socials and get to see some really good stories. Thank you. Thank you. Sam and I have one thing in common. Uh, when I was at Officers Training School in Texas, we had merits and demerits. So I took the restrooms. <laughs> so we can get off on the weekend. <laughs> My hat's off, the commission's hat's off to Sam. Thank you very, very much. Next item on the agenda, commission, committee business. Commission of Cohort. We have four policies we're going to address today. Three are obsolete and one has minor changes. There's no public input for any of these and uh, Ms. Manos will explain Policies and the changes, and then I will submit the motion. Thank you. 
Sure. So um, we have three policy. I mean, four policies. Like I said, three are obsolete. The first one is 112 DD, which is the AIDS policy. This policy was developed back in 1987 um, when AIDS became a HIV AIDS became a global pandemic in 81, and it set forth procedures for how um, we would isolate um, procedures and policies for treatment of people who were HIV positive. Um, this policy is no longer negative um, relative as those policies exist in other standards um, related to medical care for people. So we are proposing to make it obsolete. We need to do them one at a time. Do them all in order. Oh, you want to do all three obsolete? Yes. Okay. Okay. The next um, policy that is in your packet is 10103 DD. Um, it is procedures for providing genetic services in DDS and regional centers. So this policy was developed early on when we developed a relationship with Greenwood Genetics. And basically it set forth how Greenwood Genetics would go to the regional centers to do genetic testing and genetic counseling. Um, at this time, the policy has become obsolete because the genetic testing and counseling is happening um, naturally as people move through our system. Um, at the time that we developed the policy, nobody had had genetic testing, so they kind of went to all the centers. Now, by the time someone moves into a center, they've already been within our system, um, and they have the opportunity for genetic testing and counseling throughout their journey um, within the DDSN system. If someone got to a center and still wished to get genetic testing or counseling, they certainly still can. We just don't need this policy that requires Greenwood to come to the centers um, specifically. All right, and the third one is 33501DD, which is the diet manual for the Department of Disabilities and Special Needs. Um, this policy was developed to basically say what is in licensing standards. So we don't really need the policy because it's still in licensing standards. So it's not really that we don't do it. We're just really trying to go through these directives and pull out any ones that are just kind of extra that we don't need. So that one is, is being taken out. So those are the three obsolete. Do you want me to go through the fourth or do you want to do the obsolete first? I'd like to make a motion that we accept these as obsolete. You got a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. I have it sorted. All right. And the fourth policy that you have is 53508DD, Concerns of People Who Receive Services, and it's Reporting and Resolution. The only changes to this policy were really minor to um, target the titles of people who receive those complaints. We haven't changed any practice. We just were kind of trying to shore up the policy so that it really fit with the procedures that are in place. I only had one concern about it, um, okay. if you don't mind me mentioning it. Since sure. Um, and one was, it's right above where it says, it's the paragraph, I mean, the sentence above where it says procedures for, on page two, where it says procedures for concerns mm -hmm. reported to DDSN. Right above that it says um, concerns involving the health and safety of people who receive um, care they are expected to give us an immediate review. Well, to me, the word immediate could mean a lot of things. And so I'm wondering if we should put either they should give us a review within 24 hours or 48 hours or how long you want to say in there to, to qualify that word to be immediate. Because Your immediate is too ambiguous. Right. They're not, going to, they're not going to do it today. And so my question is, what does that mean? What does immediate mean? And, and could, could we clarify that? So that's not new. Right, so it's not something that we changed. It was already there. And I think the point in it is there's something earlier that talks about concerns will be addressed within 10 business days or something like that, right? That's in that's under our part. So I think what they're trying, I think 
I think the point in trying to say it is if we get a call from somebody and it's a concern and that concern jeopardizes the health and safety of a person who's being supported, we would take immediate action. We wouldn't wait till tomorrow. We wouldn't, right? If somebody said, I thought this was under the provider section. So it's the policy section. I know, but I mean, it's under the policy section, but I thought that meant that the provider had to, to give us, um, to, to, to I thought this meant that the provider had to give us information so that we could act upon it. Well, the provider, it's, it's about the provider responding immediately. Right, I, I think right. the point is saying, or whoever receives the concern, if there's a health and safety risk, we expect there to be immediate response if it has to do with the health and safety of the person. Don't you want it to be? Chairman, I, I think what Barry's saying is, to, is to, it would help, I think, to have a, a, a specific time frame, like no later than 24 hours or no later. Don't you, wouldn't that help? Wouldn't that help us if we, if, if we had a, um, a specific time frame, 24 hour, 48 hour, something like that? I'm looking at Janet because she's the po she's the policy manager of the document. Trying to help, would that be? Wouldn't that help you if you had a? So I, I think the thing with this, what this paragraph is kind of saying is that we want a provider to have a procedures in place internally to manage their own. We could certainly put a time frame in there. Um, I don't know exactly what to say because if the concern comes in that somebody is in harm's way. I don't know what more than immediate to say. Um, certainly, hours. if you have been notified that somebody's health and safety is in jeopardy, um, you have to act immediately. Yeah, because 24 don't hours is not, like, if you say within 24 hours, right? Mm -hmm. 24 hours is not good enough if somebody's standing in the middle of the road about to get hit by a car, right? Which is why I think the, the word immediate is there. Immediate or within 24 hours. I mean, I just I just think immediate could mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but I'm not going to belabor the point any further. But not taking the word out immediate or within 24 hours, Director Holloway. That well, much, I think I was, if you, I think what Lori is saying is if you say within 24 hours, the immediate just means immediate. Like mm -hmm. when you get the phone call, you take immediate action. Correct. There's no delay in your response. If you say within 24 hours, some people will wait till the 23rd hour to do something. So honestly, right, if we get a call and we're concerned about the health and the safety of the person right there at that moment, we're going to call 911, right? Because that's what you should do if you're concerned about their health and safety right now at that moment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we're going to do some kind of paper review. Like I think I don't want to get too in the weeds around this paper review thing I think the point in it being in there is that if you get a call and there's a concern around somebody's health and safety, you need to do something. You don't need to consider it a paper process. So we don't want to clarify that. Why don't we just do this? Let's leave it the way it is. And then if we want to revisit it later on, we can. We'll try to, we'll consider the wording. I still like immediate with the yeah. health and Safety concern is got to be immediate. I don't think right. we put a timetable on it. Right. I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Let's leave it the way it is now. And if we want to readdress it later on, then we can do so. Is uh, the, all the commissioner is in agreement with that? In immediate and without delay. I, I just, I just, I see exactly what they're saying. You don't want it turned so that it becomes a problem. Barry, that's the problem. But is is there another way of saying instant or without delay, immediate and without delay? I, I'm just Jan, I, I'm trying to find a way to soup it up a little bit so you don't get. Find a way to clarify how is another way of what he's saying immediate and without delay. Will that work? That, that's fine. What if we say concerns involving the health and safety of people supported must receive immediate review and action without delay? That's good. That's good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that, that should, does that help? I don't, I don't want to. I think it up mean, it certainly doesn't hurt. Is that? I mean, I don't think it hurts. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think it's just better, a little better. So, yeah, anyone want to so move, so move on that motion? 
I make the motion of accept the changes. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Next on the agenda. Full business. All right, Director Holloway. So my first line item is commission recommendation for meeting frequency. I spoke to Commissioner Thomas by months and days, or I think it was last month. Yeah. Um, I believe there was some concerns about not having a meeting in January because that's when the legislators come back into session. Um, so I think at this point, the commission needs to decide, um, do you want to stand by what you voted on in August or do you want to change that and not have a meeting in November and December and have a meeting starting in January instead? Um, in August, you voted not to have a meeting in December and January. What did you all come up with? What did we come up with? I think what, we kind of just wanted, I think, I don't think it's like, I don't think anybody like has a personal preference. They were just trying to give staff time off. Um, but I, I don't think anybody. So has it was November, strong. December, November, December, yes. November, December off. Right. And then if I guess go right. without the holidays and Christmas. Gifts. Right. Because right. see, when January, we have an option. If nothing is there, we all, that option is still on the table. So let's leave it the way it is. If you, you in agreement with that? Well, now wait a minute. November, December. Okay, but November, December. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good. I make a motion that we make it November, December. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Next part is just me giving a regional center renovations update. So the Joint Bond Review Committee for Capital Improvements met on October 8th and approved the agency's um, plan for renovations at all five of our regional centers. Um, of particular importance in that plan, the committee noted that the plan identifies $154 million in total expenses with $95 million in funding support to support um, the plan, leaving a deficiency of almost $60 million. So the committee is encouraging the department to engage with financial committees of the House of Representatives and the Senate to promote an awareness of those financial needs, which you've already started that process. Me and Rob spent a considerable amount of time down um, in several senators' office weeks ago, um, and will continue. The committee also established an expectation of calendar quarterly reporting on the progress of the plan, with the first report due at the, uh, December 31st, 2024, and that would be at the committee's January 2025 meeting. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't personally thank um, external and external, external and internal staff. I'll start with the external staff first. I just I want to thank um, Mr. Rick Harmon, who's the director of research for the JBRC. I want to thank Senator Bennett. I want to thank staff at Department of Administration, staff at the State Office of Engineering, staff at MMO. Um, they were all instrumental in helping the agency get through this process. Um, I made personal phone calls to some directors of the agencies and said, listen, this is our first rodeo of a project of this magnitude. I need your help. And everyone that I called was more than happy and gracious to help us. Um, in fact, Carolyn and Courtney are not here today because they are over at MMO receiving some training that would be instrumental in when we start procuring different pro uh, parts of this process. Internally, I want to thank Courtney Crosby, who worked tirelessly on this project. I know that because she was calling me on Saturday nights at 11 p.m., no, Sunday nights at 11 p.m. <laughs> um, I want to thank Claire Thompson, who's part of the um, engineering office, Carolyn Benson, who looked at all of the documents with a fine-tuned comb, Rob McBurney for carting me around to all the different senators, um, um, talking to those members of the House of Representatives about this project, Mary Long and Bruce Busby for helping us find the money and make sure the money that we had that we could spend it on this project. Um, when I say they work out, I, I mean, I, I, I don't say that um, in joking away. They work tirelessly on this project um, and they're to be commended for all their hard work. And I appreciate them making my job. I, I had the easiest part. I had to go down and sell it. And I, I'm a lawyer by training, so I'm really good at talking to talk. So um, my part was not as heavy lifting because I knew I had people in place who could do the heavy lifting. So I want to thank them for that. I'm excited. A little nervous, I'll be honest, because this is this is big. 
Um, but this is necessary. So we're going to keep moving forward. Well, our first phase will start at Coastal Center, and we're going to renovate two dorms at Coastal Center as part of phase one. And then we'll move into phase two. Commissioners. Uh, I, you know, this has been sort of a collaboration of uh, innovative and yes. instinctive kind of stuff. Uh, when, when I was in the legislature, but believe it or not, it, it was always cool to get some kind of certificate or something of appreciation or, you know, and, and uh, Senator Bennett needs to, uh, I think, receive something for, for don't you think? Absolutely. Uh, is that, that, you know, if you could, I don't know if we, if we have a, a, a department certificate in appreciation for, we, we, we had that in the Senate, and I probably gave out 500 uh, Senate certificates for appreciation for whatever, and the House has one, as a matter of fact. And I still have former constituents that call me up and won't, so I said, well, I'm not in the Senate anymore, but I can hand it off to the House member, and, uh, you, you know, uh, I mean, it, it's basically just filling the blank for, for uh, you know, so you're going to have the same thing. But I'd, I'd, I'd be giving that out to all your internal guys as well as external. I mean, if you got 15 people that were key, key operators, this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And what that, that, that is being done and uh, to have somebody uh, spot it and then everybody jump on the bandwagon. Nobody was uh, nobody was saying, oh, I just don't want to mess with it. And, and people, are, we're, we're going to see the benefits for this for 50 years. We're in agreement, so I want you to get with and create and then invite him and the others. That's and, a great idea. And let's, uh, so that'll be probably sometime in either January or whenever we have the next meeting. Okay, but so you all work that out and then let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. Dittos to what has happened and occurred here. It is a big thing, all right? And this commission appreciate all of the effort, all of the work that you guys have put into making this a reality. Continue driving the ship. Don't hit the corners. <laughs> Don't hit the corners. I, I can't promise that with Rob's driving. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. I was looking over there and he hit his head behind the back. Okay. And sometimes it's very difficult to, to to understand the changes that are being made. I would love to see before and after pictures oh, so that people can see what has been done with this money. That's a great idea. Yeah, that's great, great idea. idea. Yeah. So get with it. Work with it on that. Yeah. Barry, you can't work because then it's a meeting, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we could. Barry and I'll sit on the side. Yeah, we'll see. And, yeah, and we'll uh, we'll do it, all right? Okay. Tab 7. Head and spinal cord injury. Laurie. Thank you. Um, so, as you'll recall, we voted in November of 2023 for continued funding for the head and spinal cord injury drop-in centers that are located in Charleston, Columbia, Ori, and Greenville. Um, they are a place for people with brain or spinal cord injuries, it's particularly brain injury, um, to go several hours a week on a regular or on an occasional basis and have some limited on-site assistance, supervision and instruction. Um, we've been trying for a couple of years to move these models to a complete fee-for-service model. So what we have right now is we provide some funding to each of these centers um, and then we're trying to have them have enough participation to bill for services so that they're self-sustaining. If you'll recall, one of the things we were waiting on was the implementation of independent living skills. It's kind of an hourly service, one-to-one -one service for people. Um, that service is just now kind of getting off the ground and providers are being able to be enrolled. We also don't have any of these providers enrolled in that service. To be completely honest with you, when I look at the numbers, because of capacity issues, right, we talked about this last time, there's just not enough people with brain and spinal cord injuries in those areas to make it lucrative enough for those centers to be self-sustaining. I'm not sure that these centers will ever be completely self-sufficient through fee-for-service. So what I've what I would like for the commission to do 
is approve the funding as is for the first two quarters of next year, right? I have approval through December. Um, after those first two quarters, I will come back to you with a recommendation because right now what we do is we pay, I think it's $28,000 per center per quarter, right? So what I'd like to do is be able to say to you, this center would need this much if they were to stay in business. If they're not going to stay in business, this is what these people could do as an alternative, right? We're kind of at that where the rubber meets the road, where we have to determine whether we're going to continue to fund these ongoing forever and ever through state funding or whether we're going to move them to a fee for service model. Okay, commissioners. Now, don't forget, Barry have a he have to he have to learn his speech, so we don't want to delay him. <laughs> All right. So, do you see anything wrong with her with the recommendation? I move we accept the recommendation. Did I get a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. So order. So I will come back in probably May, right for June. My my intention is that there will be some funding to lead to promote those um, models through the end of next year, right? I'm hoping to be able to say this much to this site, this much to that site. Um, I don't, what I don't want is for people to be cut off from services without some lead time. So so that's what I'm, why I'm telling you, I'm gonna come in May. Well, actually that's not true. I'm gonna come in, I need to look at the first two quarters. So I'll probably come in July but we're going to need to release the funding for the third quarter before we get there. Right. That makes sense. We trust okay. your judgment. Just making sure that y'all understand. I'm not saying two quarters and cut it off. Now that Navy guy over there. Yeah. yeah. Be a different story. I got it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Director's update. Are we getting close now? Yeah. Barry, you better start practicing. Yeah. Cause y'all have to be there by the time. We got it. Okay. Um, so I want to start off by with my employee spotlight. This month we're spotlighting Rundy Ritchie. Rundy Ritchie has been a dedicated DDS employee for the past 15 years. Prior to DDSN, she served as a case manager and early intervention supervisor with Clarendon County DSM board for 22 years. Rhonda shared the wealth of her years of experience by training case managers on how to serve our clients with excellence. She was a vital resource for case managers by holding training seminars and counterpart meetings statewide. We'd like to recognize Rhonda's knowledge, work ethic, and skills, but also for the difference she has made in the lives of so many we serve. Congratulations on her retirement and nearly 40 years of service to the citizens of South Carolina. Um, at our regional centers, PD Center Spotlight residents enjoyed a visit to the Marion Museum and had a fun day of baseball on the opening day of the Miracle League. Coastal Center spent the waiting days of summers with consumers enjoying outdoor karaoke, a sneaker ball, and a Hawaiian luau. Midland Center highlighted the QIDPs and DSC, DSPs weeks with themed events to include um, board games, bingo, movie, and karaoke nights. Everybody, I, I never get invited to these karaoke nights. I'm trying. I'm kind of getting offended because I like karaoke. Um, and kicked off October with a special breast cancer awareness walk. Witten Center brought home the hardware when they had five unified Fachi teams competing in the Special Olympics at the Fall Games in Myrtle Beach. Res residents brought home four gold medals, four silver medals, and two fourth-place ribbons. Um, in transition and employment updates, um, we had some staff members, Angela, Angela, Octavia, and Carrie. They provided support for victims of the hurricane. Um, Helene. Is she Helene or Helen? I can't remember. Helene. Helene. Um, at two statewide Team South Carolina County Days in the upstate, they conducted teacher presentations at Fairfield, Chesterfield, Charleston, and Flat Rock Elementary Schools, participated in Project Search Steering Committee in Spartanburg, and hosted a vendor table at the Autism Bilingual Event in Charlotte. Um, the Golden Pound Medal Award will be presented today. Award will be held by Commissioner Miller, and <laughs> um, Commissioner Malfers will make the um, speech. 
Uh, it goes to Berkeley County as the 2023 DDSN Golden Palmetto Award winner. Um, finally, DDSN is pleased to announce the call for nominations for the 2024 Silver Palmetto Award. This award is given annually in February for work conducted in the previous calendar year. And DSN boards are asked to nominate their local city or municipality if that government body has displayed exceptional service to those who serve. A memo in regards to that award will be um, released in the next few days about details on how to submit your nomination. And that's all for me. You heard all of the updates. Can, uh, can I ask Lori just one of the questions that I meant yes. to ask you when we left here? Um, and I was going to ask during the time that we were talking about the the employment update, but I didn't, my paper slid and I didn't get to it. Um, I, I know that everybody here knows that um, a bill a bill 533 passed the, um, to eliminate the sub-minimum minimum wage in August, as of August of 24, but it, that law says that there's a report that DDSN was supposed to submit on or before January 21st of 23 to talk about the effects of that, eliminating that um, law for the 600 people that we were employed at one time with that. So I just wondered if anybody could provide me with that with that report, and do we have it? Yes, it was yes. submitted both years. I'd love to see it. Okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you. All right. We do want to recognize and uh, thank for the updates, but in particular, uh, let's give a hand clap to Miss Richie from Claret. Years ago, a long time. I used to drive through Manning all of the time on my way to college. Did you hear what I say? College. <laughs> never heard of that. Never heard of that. <laughs> Where is it near? Manning. Okay. <laughs> Good. College. Isn't that on 95? <laughs> near Manning, South Carolina. <laughs> near Santee. Okay. Well, we down to next regular meeting. What we have on the calendar is inaccurate. Is inaccurate. <laughs> so we'll be off for November and December. So in January. So in January. we want to take this opportunity to thank and wish everyone a happy turkey. I saw the turkey and the turkey disappeared. But I came back. All right. But I'm not interested in the turkey. I'm more interested in Santa. And I want to remind everybody, the holiday market is December 5th, 5th. here at the agency. Um, it's always a highlight of the year, and I would be remiss not to mention it, especially if we won't have another commission meeting before that. Okay. I'll be here. Any, and the commissioners, so if you have it, look on your schedule. And if it's you can. It's worth mentioning, though, if we do need a meeting, we will be, I assume, on Skype. If, if we need one, that's always the case. We can't ever deny that. All right. And the last thing is, we wanted to say that our special guest was not injured in any way. We just he just had a malfunction in his wheelchair. Is the reason we had the delay for ten minutes earlier today. So he is fine, except that for his wheelchair, we hope will be fine very soon. That's why I see Barry brings value. Thank you. B a l u e. All right. All right. Thank now I just wanted to welcome again the two attorneys. Y'all still here? Y'all still want the job? <laughs> you raise your right hand. <laughs> we didn't run out the room. <laughs> okay. Again, welcome aboard. Christy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Avoid confusion. I need to make a motion that all meetings will start at 1030. Going forward. forward. Until, Until we change. further notice. It's fully changed. Do I get a second? 1030 it is. All in favor? Uh, Ayes have it. Yes. Go ahead. I said I. Oh, okay. You just right. said I. You just said I. All right. Do I get a motion to adjourn? I move. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Barry, get your speech ready. <laughs> <laughs>